at six. First, the highlights. Legacy Coven seeks collaboration to strengthen impact of restorative justice. Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit secures better rating for curbing terrorism funding. On the 14, head of Norwegian Refugee Council warns of failed state in Sudan amid proliferation of armed groups. And in sport, Para United coach attributes team to loss to Bendel Insurance to lack of concentration. And now the details, I am Akan Usen. The Lake State government has identified that collaboration among government agencies, the judiciary, civil society, and community leaders is key to amplifying the impact of restorative justice. Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Lawal Pedro, stated this during a program to commemorate the 2024 Restorative Justice Week in collaboration with the Rule of Law and Anti-Corruption, ROLAC, with the theme, The Promise of Restorative, Restorative Justice, Justice in a Polarizing, polarizing World. world. Delivering his paper, paper, Pedro, who was represented, represented by his senior special, special assistant, Harun Adibayo, noted that restorative justice is not just a process but a mindset and commitment to listen and learn from each other, address systemic injustices, create a culture of compassion and forgiveness. He urged participants to bridge gaps, raise awareness and ensure swift, transformative justice, emphasizing a vision of Lagos where justice restores hope and fosters understanding. The state program coordinator of ROLAC applauded the Lagos State Government for being a pace setter in the administration of the criminal justice system, urging other states in the Federation to emulate the giant strides achieved by the state. The Lagos State Domestic and Sexual Violence Agency, DSVA, has taken the out of school children program to Lagos Island in collaboration with the Child Protection Network, Lagos State, as part of growing efforts to raise awareness about child rights and safeguarding. In his work, Hoffman addressed the agency's executive secretary, Titulola Vaivo Adini, emphasized the importance of ensuring that no child is left behind. She highlighted that the initiative aimed not only to educate children, but also to inspire them. The Lagos State Government has applauded the landmark ruling of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, which nullified the National Lottery Act, reaffirming the constitutional authority of state governments to regulate lotteries and gaming activities within their jurisdictions. Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Binga Motoshaw, in a statement, described the judgment as a historic victory for the rule of law, federalism, and the constitutional rights of states. Motoshaw said the Supreme Court's decision is a significant, re significant affirmation that the regulation of lotteries and gaming is a residual matter, falling squarely within the purview of state governments. He said the judgment reinforces the principles of true federalism, empowering states to chart their path for effective regulation. The commissioner urged all illegal and unlicensed lottery and gaming operators to immediately approach the Lagos State Lotteries and Gaming Authority, LSLGA, the sole regulatory body for lotteries and gaming in Lagos State or its prosecution, stressing that the state government will foster a conducive environment for legitimate operators and safeguard residents from the adverse effects of unregulated gaming activities. Motosha added that the Lagos State government remains committed to ensuring that the gaming sector contributes to the state's economic growth and prosperity of its citizens. The Lagos State Materials Testing Laboratory Agency, LSMTL, has opened a web registration portal for all its test activities as part of the strategy to meet the teeming demand of conducting building materials tests across the state. Speaking at the unveiling of the web portal registration during the EGIS Retreat 2.0, which was held at Lecky, General Manager of LSMTL, Olayinka Abdul, stated that the initiative was targeted 
as an automated modality for fighting against mediocrity that often caused buildings collapse across Lagos State. Abdul said it is a software application capturing data and tracking buildings for seamless execution of the LSMTL's mandate in checking building materials for quality assurance of long-lasting structures. While describing the platform as a transparent and easily as transparent and easily accessible to customers, the general manager implored that all payments be made solely on the portal, which is also connected to the Alpha Beta portal of the state government and not into individual or consultant pockets. Now to the rest of the stories. The Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, NFIU, says the country has secured additional grades in its fight against terrorism financing and money laundering. The agency noted that the ratification was done at a meeting of a group against the Money Laundering in West Africa Technical Commission, which took place between November 17 and 23 in Freetown, Republic of Sierra Leone. The Financial Action Task Force, FATF, had in 2023 greylisted Nigeria due to a rise in capital inflows and deficiencies in combating money laundering, terrorism, and arms financing. The NFIU said Nigeria has been adjudged largely compliant in 37 out of 40 recommendations after the country's removal from the partially compliant category. To this end, the member states of Intergovernmental Action Group Against Money Laundering in West Africa and international partners, including the Financial Action Task Force, have commended Nigeria on these efforts. According to the NFRU, this achievement will further strengthen the country's mechanism in combating money laundering, terrorist financing, proliferation financing, and other predicate offenses. The National President of the Federal Polytechnic Adwikiti Alumni Association, Oyedokun Abiyodun, has appealed to President Bola Tinubu to upgrade polytechnics in the country to degree awarding institutions. And we had also called for greater attention and improved funding for polytechnic education to enable the institutions fully achieve their mission and contribute more to national development. The alumni presidents made the call in Adwikiti at an event organized to honor the former rector of the institution. Then the association also presented the communique of its inaugural annual general meeting, AGM, held in Fort Harcourt, River State. The alumni called on the president to eliminate the dichotomy between higher national diploma, HND, and university degree holders and reiterated their call for the establishment of a national polytechnic commission, similar to the separate commissions for universities and colleges of education. The association further advocated for the appointment of individuals with polytechnic education to committees and panels responsible for formulating policies on polytechnic education in Nigeria. And that's for foreign news. Head of the Norwegian Refugee Council, Jan Egland, has warned that war stricken Sudan is in danger of becoming another failed state because civil society is disintegrating amid a proliferation of armed groups. Eglat noted that apart from the two main warring parties in Sudan, the army and the paramilitary rapid support forces there are many, apart from the other paramilitary rapid support forces, there are many smaller ethnic armies looting and going berserk on civilians. He said the parties are tearing down their own houses and massacring their own people. For 19 months, there has been a brutal power struggle between the army and the RSF that has forced over 10 million people to flee their homes and push the country to the brink of starvation. In our sports, Fire United head coach Tunde Sonny has attributed the team's defeat against Vendel Insurance to loss of concentration. Zani said despite efforts and the fact that the team played better in some phases, lapses in concentration cost the team dearly. Boys fell 3-1 to their hosts at the Samuel Ogbemudia Stadium, Benin City, on Saturday. 
It was in Laurie Club's first loss in three league matches. Nasser Mohamed bagged the brace. Austin Ogunye netted the other goal for the hosts, while forward Emmanuel Mbuli scored the only goal for Kwara United. Kwara United dropped to ninth position on the table following the defeat. And that's all for the news at six. Your vehicle is not a strong room. Please keep your valuables off the view of miscreants. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms on X at Traffic Radio 961, Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM, Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961. On YouTube, subscribe and watch us live on our channel, Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website on www.trafficradio961.ng. Did you know that under the Songwulu administration, over 1,000 indigent residents benefited from the state's mega empowerment program starter packs, which include grinding machines, barbing tools, hair dryers, sewing machines, and Android phones? You can get more details on the Lego State Government's website. To end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. The Legacy Government has identified that collaboration among government agencies, the judiciary, civil society and the community leaders is key to amplifying the impact of restorative justice. The Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, NFIU, says the country has secured additional grades in its fight against terrorism financing and money laundering. We also told you that the head of the Norwegian Refugee Council, Jan Egland, has warned that war stricken Sudan is in danger of becoming another failed state because civil society is disintegrating amid a proliferation of armed groups. And in sports, Quarry United head coach Tulis Sani has attributed the team's defeat against Bengal Insurance to loss of concentration. For contact with the newsroom, please send a message to info at trafficradio961.ng. And that ends the news broadcast compiled by Adiswa Ejoyoka. I am Akan Usen. Thanks for listening and peace. Stay